No? You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, the introduction, for the invitation uh, in a kind of a, you know, sometimes people invite you right on, or sometimes you get yourself invited. Uh, this is the later, not the former. And thank you, Shetnan, you know, Banu and Alper for instigating all of this um, uh, happening. You know, it's, it's great to be here. And Bill D, I, it's my first time, uh, not my first time in Istanbul. I, I love the city. It's, it's one of my top, you know, most beautiful cities in the world. And I am I'm really, really happy to, to be back and to have the opportunity to lecture here. I will, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try and, it's a little bit of a heavy content. Um, you know, mute icons, uh, which is the subject and the title of a recent book. Um, I will try and like um, maybe kind of uh, make it a little bit more interactive if that's possible. Um, I don't think it is, but feel free to be if any question. If you have questions, I mean, you can raise your hand or like, you know, I mean, uh, it's, it, it, it's actually a good thing. But I, what I'm gonna, you know, it's not that every day or every month, you know, we publish a book and, uh, and a book that I, we believe it's actually an important document. You know, it's an idea book, not just a, a monograph. And and so, you know, you try to kind of do as many things as possible to 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 uh, communicate and and uh, and expand. You know, it's a. This is not just any book. I mean, we're like try to really mix things up. You know, it's like part history, part uh, monographic atlas, part kind of speculation. There's theory. It's a lot of writing. Maybe, maybe too much writing. Uh, but like like all good books for for me, uh, there's also a lot of good images. You know, all the images that that we we make. You know? In fact, this is a kind of book about images, and it's about our reflection on architectural images. You know? Not like image making. You know, more like what we see and what we actually forecast, what we put out there as architects, you know, in terms of uh, uh, producing, enabling, and instigating new audiences, you know, what do they see, what do they actually get uh, in, in return, you know? And so um, I will, um, I mean, the, the, there's a few con there's a few parts of this book, you know, but I, I'll stay maybe within the concept a little bit and then we'll run through some parts and you'll see obviously the work, and then and I will finish with some projects, including some build work, which I think it hopefully will put it all together. You'll be my my you'll be the judge. Um, to you know the the context is a little bit context that's been in architecture for for a while now. I mean this kind of idea of uh, the forces of globalization and its discontents. You know the idea that the the, the sort of relationship between. A kind of global ambition and maybe local identity that is, you know, that basically cuts across many, many parts of culture. And and of course, the past two decades have seen like you know cataclysmic events kind of affecting the way we conceive and we 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 critique architecture. You know, I mean, uh, many cultural events and of course, you know, uh, environmental uh, processes that are actually at the center. Of it, you know, like financial collapses followed by other bubble economies, huge. Uh, you know, social um, movements around the world, I mean, including the US, but but also in, in, in Europe and the rest of the world, you know, and you can you can add to these things, you know, and, and how these things can affect uh, the change of how we see and, and we perceive architecture, you know. But all of this certainly points to a challenge, you know, to the kind of more creative and projective aspects to, to you know, of our, of our field. And most of this, I mean, not directly, but, and, and maybe a, a while ago, you know, there had something to do with the kind of often ill proclaimed death of the icon, you know, meaning the death of the architectural image, meaning, you know, something that is actually uh, to be seen, to be pursued, something different, let's say. You know? I mean, this is, you know, no more weird buildings. This was a Chinese premier uh, referring to a few buildings, including the, the, the building here. Um, we, we certainly think this is a bit of a naive, you know, response to the need for common sense and, and common ground, which is obviously part of what, what happens, you know. So, uh, of course, you know, as the contemporary role of the icon becomes a, a bit kind of, uh, uh, you know, gets under scrutiny, under stress, the question is what, you know, not like throw the icon out of the window, but what constitute a kind of, you know, um, 
a socially relevant, socially engaged, you know, uh, uh, civic minded or environmentally conscious, if you will, uh, icon nowadays, you know, and I'm not so sure I have, you know, completely like 100% an answer to that, but I'll try and ask maybe a different questions, you know, in terms of how we go about it. So, I mean, a bit of history, you know, familiar with this. I never liked Venturi as an architect, but I think he wrote some amazing stuff. You know, the question of the image in architecture goes back to Venturi. I mean, the idea between a, a building as that or a decorated shed. And, and then, you know, arguing for the art icon, specifically uh, Charles Jenks, um, you know, talked about the importance of sort of sublimating iconography, meaning like, you know, the icon shouldn't be like, things that are directly related to things you know, they're maybe like, you know, a little bit mysterious and, and uh, or he talked about, quote unquote, you know, calculated and you know. Uh, he also said that the experience of iconic buildings needed to be kind of paradoxical, you know, needed to even contradict, you know, he even the, I mean, talked about the, the icon needed to have a shape of something and kind of fascinate, horror, love, like this, this sort of like mixture of things that are usually kind of contradictory, uh, are important here, uh, and he even mentioned the, the uproar of the Eiffel Tower in, in Paris, of course, where like was hated before actually it was loved and revered. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're certainly not arguing for that idea of the icon, you know, which is the sort of child change the idea that you make a kind of show and all, and then people will will, will come. Uh, but we're interested in more in a tradition of abstraction and maybe like mutants, you know, and uh, this is. Malevich, everyone knows this, or this is our history, uh, made this show, this is all the painting, but in, in, this, in, the center, in the corner, it's, you know, Black Square, which, also, you know, not only was a, the most abstract of all of them, but also occupied the kind of, you know, a uh, uh, place usually reserved for saints in, in uh, traditional Russian homes. Uh, with that idea kind of, you know, displaced the idea of iconography that, that was known, for an abstraction, or maybe a, you know, an abstraction that is an ambiguous mm -hmm. meaning, you know. And so, some of these things are interesting. This is back, of course. You, know, you don't look at this and just try to make a project out of this, you know. But we're also interested in the real. You know? We're interested in, you know, produce architecture that has a, 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 a constructive tension between legibility and, and reticence, abstraction and realism, or, or like in this image, you know, character and complex. Uh, discussing the notion of irritation. Uh, 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 theorist Timothy Hyde uh, talked about the, that the passive manner of irritation, you know, like an ugly feeling, uh, can only be overcome by a complete transformation of the situation by which irritation arises. You know, think of anything that irritates, you know, you. Uh, in the absence of that transformation, irritation persists. You know, uh, as a simultaneous pulling together and pushing apart between person and architecture. It's like pulling together and pushing apart. If you can. Again, if you entertain me for a second, you could have a building that somehow could, you know, in, enhance or elicit such a feeling. Uh, that's a little bit what we're arguing for. That's a little bit what we're actually kind of after with, with Mura, you know, the idea that you can actually try and have it both ways, you know. And buildings, you know, in the past have done that, you know, of course, you know. Rainer Vanna discussed something like that when talking about brutalist building, you know, he's saying that you will. They will produce an affecting image, you know, something which is obviously visually violent. I mean, it's like something you're going to look at, you know. Uh, but one scene affects emotion with pleasure, displeasure, or pointedly an admixture of both, you know. Again, horribly lovely, you know, if you can have it like that. And so, um, so we think that, you know, balance between those two genres, mute icon is defined by this kind of dialectic pleasure, you know, maybe strange silhouette. A brutality, constructive brutality, if you, you know, I mean, if you can paraphrase it, uncommunicative nature or apparent autonomy from surrounding ground context. Uh, an attitude that it was kind of absolute and unstable, anticipated and strange, manifest, but also maybe withdrawn. You know? uh, they, we, this, this building can produce enduring attention by delivering a kind of persistent irritation. You know? and, and so, um, you know, finally, Viktor Slavsky talked about, you know, in art as technique, talked about um, art exists so you can recover the sense of, you know, a sensation of life, you know, so you can make, uh, uh, you can bring things back to what they were when they, you didn't know them. You know, he uses the, the phrase, make, you know, to make the stone stony again. Art is supposed to do that. Architecture as well. 
So if you wonder how, how do you make the stone stony again, you know, and, and we think that to make the stone stony again, uh, to feel stone stony again, you know, uh, to give the sort of roughness that you actually, you know, new architecture has to be both strange, but but also wonderful. And that's kind of what we are, you know, setting up to do on, on, uh, on both, you know, the book as a kind of idea, putting a, planting a seed, uh, but also in our, in our work, you know, uh, so, Anyway, the you know the book has many sections. There's a history section that I'm not gonna. It's a very dense, but again, there's a lot of pictures arguing for like, you know, how can you construct the history of mute of uh, mute iconicity in architecture with like you know things like the lonely castle in, in the Saudi desert, which is really an object, kind of a found object that architecture sort of come to it, you know, and 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 it's carved away from it. Of course, architecture can be neither solid nor impenetrable, uh, but architecture can somehow seem or appear like that. You know? uh, and in fact, that that kind of delay in experience, delay in visibility, uh, like in this, you know, in the Church of Saint George in Ethiopia, where the building is both an autonomous figure but it's also part of the ground, and you may have seen pictures of this actually being kind of everything and nothing. Um, thank you. Uh, it's actually uh, you know quite amazing. So, uh, or you know, other unbuilt projects such as the cenotaph by Newton, who appears completely solid only to be completely void at, upon entry of that space. Um, you know that uh, Boulet actually envisioned the entire um, uh, galaxy to be painted on the on the city. You know so. But of course, you know, new icons or architecture cannot be a defensive architecture. These are interesting present. We love these pieces, you know, bunkers as well. Uh, we take inspiration, we take pride, analyzing how these things, you know, why do they have a particular silhouette? How do they have this sort of uh, irritating aspect, you know, and how important that is, you know? Uh, or of course, buildings that are maybe more known and still functioning, you know, like the Met Brewer or former Whitney Museum by Breuer, which is, Never a crowd pleaser, never really like the Guggenheim, you know, it was always a, a building that was kind of loved and revered, but also somewat feared, you know, this building and one eye monster and so on and a bunch of names, you know. So uh so the what we tried to do is to kind of set up a, a little bit of a impossible dialogue between our our own work and the work of our predecessors, including some of our contemporaries like you know, Nelkelings Redick or even Kohas or um, and then to move into the kind of discipline to to try to talk about more specific issues about like that are maybe more connected to design, you know, like in the aspect of indeterminacy you know, when it comes to form, you know, or vagueness, or or by the way, you can see like our work in relationship with these things. Not that we kind of like, look at this and we make that. It's more like the things are like for many of you in the back of your mind, you, know, you look at presence, you're aware of history, and yet you go and do the work, and then it, it kind of looks like something. And architecture doesn't grow out in the vacuum, it kind of persists. I mean, we believe, you know, through the history of architecture, but also through the irritation and the, and the pressure of the new uh, monolithicity, what I discussed, you know, about our interest in making it seem appear solid, you know, and appear, you know, delay legibility as a way to bring people in, you know, create this forms of irritation, you know, or, or the character, you know, an obscuring character. Too much character and you get a duck, you know, in, in a sort of Charles James way, you know, so obscuring the character to create just enough uh, interest and, and, and maintain it over time. You know? uh, shade and shadow and you know, other aspects that are important. Again, if you get a, a handle on this book, you can, you can read or you can just look at the titles and so on. It's meant to be, uh, that you know, made like an irritation, you know, uh, uh, or you know, the relation between architecture and the ground. You know, when architecture makes its own ground, uh, or when architecture is both kind of part of the ground and and becomes, uh, uh, but also claims a certain form of autonomy. You know, these are projects that somehow aim to do that. And of course, the problem of context, which is key, you know, in all of this. You know, you don't make you know things are not the same in Los Angeles as they are in Istanbul, as they are in, in Riyadh, or as they are in in, in Bali. You know, they're there are different things that play a role. And yet you also don't want to be completely, completely caught up in, in local culture either, because I don't think that's necessarily a solution if you're pursuing a certain kind of work like what we do. You know? So um, anyway, there's a project section. Projects are presented as 
incomplete more than than you know they're 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 grouped by forms of representation you know from like diagrams to this you know kind of hyper real as we call uh ideas of mixing forms of representation that tend to depict architecture um you know architecture to architects you know like when you do isometrics you're not trying to see the object in space but you're trying to see the space of the object you know like and understanding what the building you know is i mean these are all you know some of these are distorted purposely to to show these sort of oblique views meaning like you know uh, or or some are like more traditional isometrics you know but we try to do these things also to you know go beyond the typical understanding chart to bring context to bring aspects of it i will say that's a symbolic that's in mexico you know uh some things are more abstract you know and 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 uh and so on you know and then you i don't know you like the idea of looking back and seeing how different projects from i don't know bogota to rosario to kosovo to mykonos you know share some dna but also are radically different as well you know? uh, and so i mean i one of one of my first uh Favorite books was uh, a scientific autobiography by Aldo Rossi. I recommend students to read. It's beautifully written. You know, could be a little too much, but um, but it has a little bit of that. You know, um, you know, physical models, which are, in our opinion, the kind of abstractions of the real. You know, of course, they're physical things and so on, but they're usually a vehicle that is never kind of, uh, you know, investigated on other on other means. You know, what you know, when you make a physical model out of uh, you make a rendering and people ask you all sorts of questions uh, about the material and so on. You make a model in balsa wood and no one will ask you like, you know, Mr. Architect, you intend the building to be made out of balsa wood. You know, everyone understands that that's an abstraction and it's okay. And then in that in that space, there's a lot of possibilities for architecture to, to experiment. You know? In fact, we, we try to use that sometimes as a way of maybe delaying aspects of material making, material thinking, because our so it's, it's not immaterial, but it's certainly more abstract and material finds its way into, into the project. I mean, finally, the, the, you know, maybe something that's maybe closer to us, at the, the aspect of the image, you know, we're super interested in, you know, and all the real, that's, you know, we're really interested in photography and as an art practice, art, artists will take issue with what I'm gonna say, but we think photography is it's one of the most real form of uh, art because it deals with the real itself, you know, at least in kind of visual form. So the work of Gregory Crutzon or Todd Heide or Thomas Roof, it's been super influential in the way we conceive, you know, uh, architectural images, you know. Again, this is not just like a bunch of renderings, everyone does this, and it's more about what you do in these renderings, how you look at them, you know, how you can actually make them do things that are a little bit beyond what the public would want to consume, you know, what the public or the client, you know, like we had this thing where like people say like, oh, one more kids, you know, kids with balloons is a typical thing that developers would want to put because it makes the building more friendly and so on. And I will say, sure, I mean, we've done it when we had to, but I don't, that doesn't, that doesn't make architecture better. That doesn't make it more sustainable. That doesn't make it friendlier, you know? Uh, so uh, in, in doing these things, we also collaborated with people we collaborate, but we also give them kind of leeway to look at possibilities of how these buildings could be a little bit more, uh, not change the design, but somehow change the context or change the narrative to really make the, you know, these things are more important, the, the images are as important as the narrative in terms of what's, what's going on, an opening night for a museum in Budapest, uh, another museum that is kind of, Almost like a character in the in the in the center of the park, um, or you know, really early morning, you know, where the museum is not even at the center. Another another project. This is a series of four museums where the building appears almost as a negative, as a phantom, you know, and 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 we spend almost you know a lot more time modeling and depicting the context uh, to make our building look purposely more abstract and more and more uh, and more new, you know. Um, or even, you know, playfulness with the real, like, you know, emergency lights going off, you know, in the buildings. And I mean, you wonder what, what this has to do with architecture. It has to do with the way we actually see architecture, with the way we, we uh, uh, you know, perceive it, and maybe the way we, we conceive its value in relationship with other things, you know, uh, or even the kind of almost like a setting scene of a Hollywood movie where the building is kind of in the, in the context. 
or a commentary of the climate change, you know, in terms of raining and storms, you know, this is something that is actually happening in LA right now, which is you know, the so-called atmospheric river and so on, you know. It's a way to kind of somehow use your work to have a larger conversation that has to do with things going on without saying, I'm going to do all those things, you know? I mean, no, we're going to still do architecture, you know? And I feel like the, the stronger aspects of architecture we can still play. So, so anyway, um, we're small, you know, we're small studio, uh, you know, around 10, 12 people, uh, really kind of horizontally uh, organized in nature, but with hopefully a kind of clear understanding of what we, we want to do. Uh, which is really kind of you know, practice globally uh, without producing a kind of you know one one size fit all you know I mean we come from certain places and and and, and you know like Argentina or the Pampas you know that's kind of our native landscape of my partner and I and and this is our home you know where we practice with all the advantages and contradictions that the U.S. especially Los Angeles has a sort of like a perfect perpetual search for the new can, can break, you know? Um, just gonna quickly go through this project just to maybe do a point, you know? I mean, this is actually our, my school, SIAR. Uh, we won this competition to design this, this pavilion, which is called League of Shadows, um, which really has three main things, you know, to create a landmark for the school that, is, that didn't have one, to create a space that will be under shadow for around 1,200 people to graduate in every summer day, which we know exactly the day. And so we could calculate the, the, the shade incidence. And then, you know, added it to basically try and stay away from people when you're not really using it, you know, not to become this sort of dead space uh, or dead icon in the middle of the parking lot, but rather do something that actually is the opposite. And so we, anyway, we, we won this, we built this, I mean, had a lot of people said that it looked like Batman. We had to just call it League of Shadows because it was a rip off. We like popular culture and it really had to do with shadows, you know. But it's mean, you know, it's really a kind of mute icon in the sense of like it's it's iconic in one side, it's mute on the other, you know. I mean, it's that's our kind of reflection on it. Uh, it produces this kind of amazing backdrop for, for a student to graduate and meet parents, take a bunch of pictures and so on. But the, the point that I wanted to make is that we we, you know, I mean just made a book called Mute Icons. We really don't make icons, you know, as architects, we make projects, we make buildings, you know, you make drawings, you know, for other people to build it. Only culture make icons, you know, culture make icons once they actually use them and, uh, and, uh, and appropriate these things. And these are not our photos, you know, a bunch of people post these photos after a while. I mean, of course, there's much more iconic things than this and you know them, and, but it's kind of interesting, you know, to reflect on that, including this. I mean, I don't watch this, but people sometimes send this to us, which has had to do with the location. Um, again, I, it's it's funny. You, it's another one of those things that depict LA in a kind of dystopian future, facing the you know just crossing the LA River, and and everything's kind of smoky, and and our building is right at home with that, and, and means like you know it just fits with that. So um, anyway, I mean I'll. I'll show you a few work and, and finish with a most recently completed building. Um, this is in Argentina. It's a uh, it's a apartment tower. It's like 12, 10, 12 story high uh, building. A second building on a, on, a, on a similar context outside of Rosario. This is our hometown. Uh, Rosario is like a you know one million person city, um, and we wanted to. You know, this is all about the kind of envelope, about the actually inside outside space, um, which really has to do with like how to create balconies that will be more than just the typical kind of exclusion out or, you know, the kind of developer oriented formula, which seem to go a lot, you know, happen a lot in South America at least. And we were looking at these kinds of old buildings, you know, that you had volumes coming, projecting out of the, you know, construction line or the property line. So, you know, we did a bunch of permutations, but basically what we wanted to do is to create something that will come in kind of a, in a, in a sort of continuous way from the balcony in a projecting, uh, projecting space and back into a kind of single surface, you know, uh, in a corner, which was actually kind of a, a good idea. So there's two small apartment, two bedroom apartment, two, two bedroom apartment per floor, and, uh, and it's a corner thing, you know, corner 
in a, in a super nice area adjacent to the downtown core with lots of trees and so on. It's nice when, you know, architecture can enhance the context, but cannot remake it completely. So, you know, once you have that, it's, it's nice to be able to, um, you know, to do those kinds of, uh, you know, projects. And, you know, we're, we're working in the U.S. for a long time now, more than 20 years, uh, but, we're, but working in elsewhere, you also understand that there's different, you know, in the U.S., architects are not responsible for the means and methods, you know, you can only specify the design, other people will have to build it. You know, in South America, I don't know, probably similarly in, in, in Turkey, uh, you get involved in the construction, you know, you get involved into how you're going to do this. That's what we had to do in Argentina, I, you know, uh, figure out a way to say this is a hyperbolic paraboloid, which is actually repeated seven times on each side of the, of the facade to create this sort of like a kind of twisting moment that was important to, you know, important for the building, you know, and this, this small piece took quite a while, you know, in order to figure out and, and of course, figuring out other parts. I mean, again, this is something where, you know, you have to go above and beyond just saying, I want this and, you know, because whether you want or not, there may be a budget, but there might not be a know-how how to do it. And, you know, these are small things, but it means that we are obviously interested in, in going all the way. And, but also to say that this is not just a formalized building, you know, what we wanted to produce, understanding what this typology is, it's really to create a sort of interior, exterior connection to create a kind of pocket that would be not completely open to the people that are going to potentially build the building in front, that everyone's look at each other, put their bike, put the older shed outside the balcony and get super ugly. But you will have this almost like an intimate space outside of the building, you know, uh, and everyone will sort of, you know, uh, conquer it the way they, they want it to do. So, um, you know, Absorbing the corner in the building, uh, which usually is a column, you know, and then uh, and then the interior is just really an experience of whiteness at many levels, you know. So small uh, small space at the rooftop uh, overlooking the the Parana River, which is kind of the main uh, river in Rosario, and then uh, yes, then a couple of views of the buildings, you know, from the corner again. Similar facades, just different kind of proportion and so on. So, um, this is another project uh, recently, and or, sorry, we, we lost this project uh, right in the final for a university building in, in, in outside of Los Angeles, in a very kind of a closer to the desert, so it's kind of warm, you know. And uh, I mean, the interesting thing of this building was really. Kind of our approach, you know, they really wanted a sustainable building and so on, and we wanted to just not do a, another thing where you add a bunch of fi fixtures to make a building sustainable. We wanted to make a party. We wanted to make a, a project itself that would actually operate like an ecology. So, anyway, there's like four four C's, um, you know, context. You know, this thing needed to fit and and uh, fit in and stand out. Um, it was a building for entrepreneurs and artists. Uh, they were going to collaborate. It wasn't very really clear the program, so we had to kind of thought it, you know, th thought about that aspect as a community and consider kind of agora as a sort of like cascading effect that will connect all these people. Uh, but more importantly, we thought about comfort or discomfort. How to actually make a building that will not have any corridors uh, that will be indoors. You know? All the corridors are outdoors. They're shaded and self shaded. Uh, including deep courtyard that will allow the building to, you know, master the energy and 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 be a different kind of form, you know, become an ecosystem, you know, uh, not just a real ecosystem, but also kind of socially interconnected ecosystem. And of course, you want character, as well, you know? so the building will, you know, will look like something and it will have a strong position in that. So um, anyway, it's a porous building, like a campus building, even though it looks pretty pretty solid outside. Uh, and it has a section that you can really see from outside that is really this cascading event. But it's not just a cascading to create a stair, to create a kind of typical seating area, but also to create almost function as a kind of proscenium field, which are, we're always kind of interested in that typology that will allow for this kind of multi-use space to be enclosed, you know, or to open up, you know, to become a kind of large gathering or to host even commencement, you know, uh, uh, events for like up to a thousand people. Uh, in in that in that space, you know? so um, you know we wanted the building to be 
really, really kind of stone and dark. And so we kind of experimented with, with this idea of like using granite from like one of the two open quarries in California that actually does the stone and, and, and thought that it actually could be a, you know, an interesting, uh, uh, an interesting effect. Let me just go here. Um, anyway, that, um, it's, it's a very kind of, uh, I mean, sort of almost brutalist looking building from outside. It's very heavy and it's very close. Um, so it avoids kind of direct, uh, you know, direct intake of, of, uh, uh, of heat and light. And then it's incredibly open on the interior, you know, and it has this sort of a very simple project, uh, including even for our standards, you know, in terms of like how things are kind of like cohered together. You know, and then, but the idea is that it's, it's incredibly, you know, porous as well, you know, and, and so you, you know, enter these and you have this kind of, you know, enter midway to the stair that will take all the way, all the way up to the roof, you know, that you, you know, it's a university, there's seven campuses, you know, and, and, and so anyway, and we thought it was important to create a kind of this kind of imbalance that comes with the, the oblique. Even though it's not a ramp, it's a stepping condition that will again create enough of uh, unpredictability and indeterminacy that will allow many, uh, you know, many kind of possibilities to emerge. Uh, I wanted to show you; it will come soon. You know, the interior is very, very simple, very kind of almost Messian, and and we like this kinds of condition. You know, that's a gallery down there which will. You know, we thought it as a sort of large garage that will open its doors and could create a kind of proscenium theater as a stage. And it will become a, or, or will be a kind of art gallery that will be open and closed, depends on the climate, depends on the weather, and so on. And so, um, anyway, I'm just going to run through it. Uh, just to show, I mean, other work, uh, the project in Bali, uh, with, where the context is radically different. And, you know, we were looking into a, a building, a hotel in the center of the island, very, very kind of a noisy part. And, you know, material is important to us in terms of ways of like how to ground things. And we were, you know, planning to use this volcanic stone to Class this building, which by the way needed to avoid a small uh, temple that is on the side, uh, and so it allows this you know, perfect alibi to create this kind of V shape in terms of a instead of a, a usual uh, L L type, you know, and so a very kind of ordinary articulation of you know relatively uh, simple party, and then just you know think of it in in terms of context, of course. Um, I'm going to run through this. I'm not going to. Uh, just another project in Los Angeles and uh, of medical building in Glendale, um, just to show some, you know, a little bit of the process of like the many permutations that often take place. And you will say, well, they're all the same, and they are and they are not. You know, it's like it takes many, many different variations, and each of them, I mean, they look, they look, you know, uh, all the same, but they all have. Small variations in programs and so on. Um, in this case, to use you know the, the envelope, but also to use you know which is kind of a solid volume to basically try and like not deconstruct but carve and cut away of this more corporate typology that 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 needed to happen in order to make a building that is almost like three parts that are kind of into cracks, open balconies, uh, conditions that are not continuous themselves but allow like indoor outdoor situations. To exist also like a double envelope, you know, for like the sun shading, but also for formal and aesthetic reasons as well. No? And so I like to describe the building as a kind of a commercial building that wants to be part of a kind of a civic context and and, and has a sort of civic minded, uh, you know, kind of like persona. You know? And so anyway, we also make models and, and you know, and make renderings and so on. Uh, Another problem, I mean, this is kind of on the on the boards, you know, a gigantic uh, billboard for West Hollywood. This is part of the program of West Hollywood to do a little bit of Times Square along Sunset Street. Um, 
and in doing so also like enhance the architecture, enhance the content, mix media with art. And so we want this, this is kind of a gateway. So it's a gigantic billboard. I'm not gonna talk too much, but just to say, it's interesting how many of these buildings are also, you know, they take on existing conditions, you know, and also similar to the other, we pay a lot of attention, not just to, to mass and form, but also to our, the articulation of certain, you know, either the soft bits or what you're going to see when you're actually, you know, uh, moving close to this, you know, close to this building, you know, or um, or this house in the Palisades, which will go into construction soon, we hope, uh, which is this house now, it's an existing house that, that the client wanted to either renovate or throw away. And then we thought, well, what if we can just reuse part of it, you know, has a sort of modern vibe, let's say, and but had no presence on the street. And we created this kind of incredibly complex, not complex because we wanted to make it complex, but we also, because we needed to set, the, you know, a certain condition in the topography to stay within the buildable envelope, to fit many norms. This is one of the hardest, you know, areas to build in Los Angeles, which is the coastal, Palisades, I mean, all of the overlays are present, and so you have to find ways to to deal with them. You know, so uh, so the house, you know, it's really kind of cascading down the, the canyon and has views to the Pacific Ocean to the side, and and it has this kind of situation where it's sort of monolithic on a part and has a sort of modern vibe, and then it has a sort of more contemporary piece, uh, and then it has this cut on the side, which is something we we like to do to bring all the volumes together, but also actually kind of has a fundamental notion of like, uh, you know, the encroachment plane that you have to follow. So, I mean, this is just to show, show a bunch of images, but of course, as architects, we make a lot of drawings, you know, because that's the way you build, and that's the way you figure out these things. And so there's sort of like four different plans and, you know, the building has a kind of circulation around this courtyard, which we needed to preserve for like, the client wanted to keep it. And, and it was a really beautiful space that we give the, the, the project a little bit more privacy um, as it actually you know exists in the in the in the complex you know lots of drawings to really figure this out you know and, and uh, but then it kind of looks like that you know which is also important for us you know the building doesn't look like a huge McMansion you know preposterously uh, arrogant to the context but rather it has a kind of a more humble scale. Uh, to produce them, you know, effect or spaces like this as you as you go down, you know, the hill. Uh, it should be built with uh, this uh, black and dark and uh, charred wood, you know, which is a kind of free uh, burn wood that will give it a kind of texture that somehow fits the the, the forest, but also gives it, a, you know, an authenticity. Uh, and so finally, um, you know, a building that we worked for like five years, uh, it's a wellness center outside, uh, I mean, in North Hollywood, which is part of the San Fernando Valley. Um, again, it was an existing supermarket, a bolstering trust building that the client wasn't sure whether to keep or not. And we kind of convinced him that it was the right thing to do. And, and you know, they wanted to originally create a medical campus. And, and so there's another building on the side and a larger property. And so we kind of convince them to, to say, well, you know, we keep this building, but we really build more like, you know, subtraction more than addition. I mean, we might have a better chance of succeeding and that's kind of what we did. And, you know, interesting. I mean, we didn't do it for sustainability reasons, always did that part of it. We did because it was the, 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 it seemed like the right thing to do. So the site plan, it's, it's a kind of a very transitional part of town that I think it, this building, even though it's not a public building, it has a kind of civic character uh, and enough open space that it actually kind of, you know, uh, goes in that direction, including, you know, car courtyards, open spaces, uh, very, very deep, you know, uh, spaces down inside the building that will allow the building that was uh, one level, now have three levels, you know, we added a basement and a mezzanine and, and to create something that uh, I think of, the section that is actually really, really deep. And in going deep, you find, you know, in an area that is incredibly hot, especially in the summers, a much more kind of cooler uh, spaces that are like really well confined and so on. So, um, you know, the airflow and that, the cell shading, um, this was what existed. You know, the two buildings were almost touching each other. And so we actually demolished a bunch of stuff. 
kept the sign um, as you know, a kind of almost like a, I like to call it a kind of humbly sort of short minaret, uh, which gives a kind of civic uh, side to this composition. You know, there's a Burban Airport far from there, and it's very, very much like a day, horizontal context. So having this vertical piece uh, help it kind of anchor along, you know, Victory Boulevard. And of course, we added these new offices space in the big courtyard, but we added them in a way maintaining the kind of uh, the shape of the Wall Street class. So the articulation is such that it allows each of those offices to face out and, and have it both ways, you know, it looks new, but also kind of fits in. Uh, the courtyards are seen from outside by, by cats, let's say, not revealing too much, by creating this kind of contrast that acts as almost like figuration and hopefully entice enough interest and curiosity to, to go in, even if it's not a public building. So, uh, so you see this on top and there's deep spaces, you know, we use, I mean, it's a very cheap building. Uh, we use this corrugated metal and then board form concrete on the courtyards and then, you know, collaborating with the landscape architect to give it a kind of lush effect. Um, and then the spaces kind of look out on this sort of like mezzanine level uh, into the into the outdoor space and so on. Um, and then you have this kind of more like mute views where this thing has a kind of more processional aspect, uh, which is interesting, you know, as it reveals a, a, a kind of more sectional activity, you know, which is when you actually see from the from the courtyard. So, and of course, you know, we like. I just figured, you know, we like, you know, when you finish a building, you take photos, you try to somehow project what you had in mind when you made it, you know, and hopefully see it matches or not the ambition. And, and also use film, try to stay true to your guns in terms of like, you know, you can, you can control the way the public is going to see this, but you can at least control the way you're going to put forward and somehow connect, you know, connect context back into the building, you know, including this very informal strip malls that I live, you know, exist there and, uh, and then just focus on details and the totality and, and so on. So, uh, anyway, uh, this is just open. Uh, so it, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, I guess you, part of doing these things is obviously you don't know what's going to happen after, but you have to almost kind of educate the audience, you know, by doing these things to, to see how these things work. You know, most medical or buildings are enclosed and they don't have outdoor spaces and so on. So we have to, like, kind of, you know, show them. You have to use the outdoor space, you know. I mean, this is mostly for elderly people that they actually are there, they they eat, they have lunch, they are taking around, and so I have the human side to it, which is actually important, besides the, the image, besides the architecture, which I, you know, we're actually quite happy that, that that's happening. So um anyway, thank you so much. Um, again, thank you very much for uh, checking our invitation and for this very informative presentation. Uh, if you accept, uh, maybe some uh, students have some questions that they would like to ask and ask. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we'll give some five or seven minutes. Okay.
Tell me what it is that you in our perspective at least in time for the question. So can we open it and what the different uh what can we can uh and and we can can design in that this is this I think for our team, but still keeping that uh up to the um, functional uh, aspect of this, like a journey or something, which I don't think we can write it somehow, like we have to do this for me. Yeah. But at least open up the present material, it's more like the journey that I can do that for this. So, uh, one thing that I'd like to ask is uh, uh, how do you think that? The definition of moving and action in architecture could be pursued in the contemporary structure, perhaps. And then I think there's some, I don't know what you're going to do. Yes. Uh, so that's it. Yes. My Pamela picture that you see later. Yes. 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 Yeah. I mean, the, to the first question, I, I I hope I mean I show something along those lines. I mean, clearly we are. You know, we're saying like buildings have to have some value uh, beyond just the functionality, beyond the service, beyond all the things that you know people and the society ask of buildings. Of course, I'm fine with that. I'm a licensed architect. I, you know, um, but then what that value is and how we perceive and we assign value to 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 that character is often skewed by what you know people say you know or like the more glass makes the building more friendly more transparent you know stuff like that let's say which then of course you know, sustainability came and it's like oh you have to make less glass but then you don't want to make it bunker either i mean this is a bit of an irritation to say not to say hey you're going to build bunkers now i'm sure they may be cool inside but then they're very defensive and but to say that there's Maybe we can look the other, you know, in, in different ways as to how to, to to assign value to buildings and icons. It's one way, of course. I I don't like many buildings that are like too overtly trying to create an icon. This sort of shock and no idea of like trying to make something radically different. I often think it kind of gets quickly passé, and and so if anything, we we really take a lot of pride and and, and have a huge amount of respect for the new when it comes to our own work. Um, and so we try to get at it in ways that are we think are going to be more lasting. Architecture is neither fashion nor art. You know, you can't make a building and next year think like, well, it didn't look too good. I'm gonna do a new one. You know, so um, and again, we build build things for other reasons too. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have to sort of position these things in culture. I mean, teaching. In fact, this is maybe a book that is a lot more for students than for a regular public. It's really just to, to maybe put forward a way of seeing architecture, a way of seeing both new and old things, uh, meaning, you know, and also to a firm belief, especially in my own discussion, in my own school, which is very, very committed to, to the new uh, and, and to things outside architecture, to say that architecture still has ways of doing things. You know, and there's a discussion of it. You know, you had Graham Harman here, so you know the whole discussion about like uh, speculative realism or triple O. I don't directly touch on it, but but obviously there are you know parallels and dialogues. But but um, but I feel like it is kind of our duty at least to try and say things within architecture. Not to say architecture is a kind of silo and doesn't talk with other fields. But also not to relinquish our strength, you know, as a, as a discipline and as a field, to do things that we can do, you know, and not just to do what the public wants us to do, you know. I mean, to do it, but to do it in our, in our own way. You know? So I think that's a kind of a practical aspect, but it's also a, a theoretical uh, uh, proposition as well.
I think you bring an important issue, which is the user, and and the user is obviously it's got to be part of this, no? And it's and um, you know, like they said, all like I mean, all our projects don't happen in a vacuum. There are like clients; they basically they have demands, and um, but the demands themselves, the user themselves, are not going to do a thing for you. If you don't bring, you know, some of your own stuff to the party, you know, it's like you're going into a fight. You have to fight, you know, and you better know how to. Otherwise, they'll they'll beat you down, and you become, a, you know, and you become just a kind of, a, or you're just being responding to things that are being thrown into you, you know. So, I, I'm purposely not talking about many of those issues. I mean, I do talk a little bit about. Like, they want the client wanted a sustainable building or they they wanted a campus, but then we found our own way to respond to that. You know, and sometimes those ways put the people, the users, in a bind that because they know how they don't know if they can take it, you know. And I think this is the point that is important, you know, like the university people, the stakeholders, they wanted a sustainable building. And yet they had a lot of questions and we had to bring, uh, you know, Buddha Hapo to the meetings to say, how is the air condition is gonna work? I mean, this is like pre-programmed. Right? And they mm -hmm. wanted to know how the air condition is gonna work. And I said, the air condition is gonna work. I mean, if you don't believe the architect, you know, bring this, the, the mechanical engineer to say, they're going to do it this way and do the diagram and we prove them because it's not a regular building. And, you know, again, they have all the right to ask, you know, you can invest like whatever, $40 million, you know, on a, on a, on a building, you, you have to know. But, you know, it means also sometimes you can't just like answer everything you're asked, you know, and because sometimes the questions are wrong. You know? And sometimes the, the, then you can't have, you know, whether you have the right answer, if the question is wrong, then you have to ask, you know, a different question and, and you know, educated in an educated way. Political UK ways, uh, you want to kind of tell them that instead of doing this, why don't you do that? You know, and so I feel in that position, I think the ar architecture is a complicated, you know, field because you know we're associated with politics, you know, we're instruments of power, but you do have to find ways, you know, maybe uh, covered ways of of pushing back to it in ways that are like important that that keep our power intact, not autonomy, you know, but but like but to still be able to to you know to produce value for culture, not just for whoever is paying you, you know. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Show them in the moment uh, that you are working on the, uh, the presentation. What was the point? Uh, how do you see the continuity of the uh, presentation to the final product in relation to the uh, iPad next? I mean, uh, what do you see in the future? Do you think quite a strong uh, detail in the final? Uh, 
surface pattern. How do you expect that? Or what, what would be the type of the expression of all the um, I mean, it's a tough question because it's really, um, you know, we, we try to, to be as much like, you know, try to be as much in control in, in, in what we do. But of course, when you, especially when you work in overseas or, I mean, even in the US sometimes, no, I mean, like, it, it depends on the client, it depends on the budget, it depends on, and, and of course, you know, you can always say no, but, so I don't, I mean, there isn't one answer. I mean, ideally, you know, we'll, we'll basically, we're, we're kind of the one, you know, uh, our studio, we, we go all the way, you know, we like to be involved in the construction documents, we like to do all the specification. Uh, you try to make drawings and all sorts of specs that, that will basically, People would make it basically, and you're always learning also. Uh, but sometimes a lot of things happen, you know, in, in, in between. I mean, for this last building, we have like 10 different ways of clearing this new part, far more expensive, far more um, precise than, than what happened, which was more like, a, I mean, industrial, uh, industrial material that we figured, okay, it gives us texture, which we thought it was important and matched the, the, the rest of the building. And, you know, it was a bit of a, I mean, compromise sounds like a negative word, but you know, you find, I mean, architecture is a little bit compromised when you are building, you know, and so we're happy to go down that path to understand, you know, the limitations and also get what we want. But also I have to say, when we when we move, you know, when we start the building and, and building is important, not because you build, but also because it gives you a kind of pushback on your ideas, you know, and you realize that maybe certain things you want to do are going to be complicated to do, you know? And so I think it's important in that sense to find the kind of pressures of the real to say, you know, am I going to live with this, you know? I always like to give the example of color. Let's say. Well, not really color people, you know? And I mean, I'm saying color doesn't matter in architecture, it clearly does, but, you know, I'm always like kind of, a little bit skeptical about like using color if we're not super clear because then you, you have to live with it. You know, you have to live with the material. You have to. So I, I mean, I think you know your question is a, is a valid one because you want to have control, but I think that 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 control sometimes you know you have to relinquish it. You know, but of course, yeah, we're super obsessive. We you know, and that means that you have to go. It's not just documentation; it's also then going the extra way to go into the site as much as you can to make sure that you're preventing some things from happening. You know? Uh, but that's not this. So. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Uh,